Hey guys, this video is, uh, well, it doesn't, this video doesn't really have any specific topic, per se, but I have decided to try and do a thing, kind of like a, a nightly audio diary thing before I go to bed that I'll post here on YouTube. It, it mostly serves two functions, in essence, uh, the first being to help me for myself keep track of uh, the day and um, just the general things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, because I, I tend to be really bad at keeping track of the time um, and it's kind of problematic actually um, as well as to just kind of like spill my thoughts of the day whatever it is that's been on my mind or showcase whatever, you know, drawings I might have done that day that I thought might be cool to share. So, um, I'm thinking about maybe making these, like, 10 or 15 minute videos. I don't know. I guess it'll just depend. Um, so yeah. Uh, each of the videos from after this one will just start with me, uh, listing off, uh, listing off the... Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Listing off the date, and then just talking about, um, whatever's been on my mind today, I guess, or whatever work I've been doing. Um, so today is actually Halloween. Um, I'm about to go to bed because I go to bed at like 5 o'clock in the morning. I have kind of a night schedule, so I won't be, you know, it, it won't really be Halloween for me, for me till later, but it is technically already Halloween for you guys. Um, well, some of you guys, I don't know. Depends on, I guess, where you are when you're watching this. Um, so it's, it's a Monday, October 30th, 2017, uh, which also makes it Jesse and I's four-year anniversary now? Yeah. Yeah, four-year anniversary. Um, uh, I haven't really made an official announcement about this as of, as of yet, just because it wasn't something that really has changed much for the two of us, but Jesse and I are, as it currently stands, engaged. We don't have plans for when exactly, um, we're gonna get married or how we're gonna do that, um... Jesse kind of liked the idea of maybe trying to do it on Halloween. Not this year, obviously, but I don't know. Maybe we might try for next Halloween or something. I don't know what we'll do. We're broke as hell, so I can't see doing much in terms of like a, a wedding ceremony. That and <sighs> my family is kind of weird and complicated, and in real life I am kind of uh, somewhat of an antisocial shut-in, so I don't have a whole lot of in-person friends, so I don't know that there'd even be a ton of people at our wedding anyway. But it might still be nice to do something, you know, have like a little ceremony. Oh, and um, if you're going to be plan planning a wedding ceremony or anything like that, Whenever possible, when you're getting supplies for it, don't let the people that you're buying stuff from know that it's for a wedding. Like, just buy a normal cake. Buy, like, a dress and say, I don't know, that it was for prom or some shit, or just, you know, just buy a dress and don't specify what it's for. My point is, as soon as any company knows that you're buying stuff for a wedding, they are going to charge you way more than they normally would for whatever the hell the thing is. So just, I don't know, keep that in mind. <laughs> As if that advice applies to any of the people who watch my stuff. Maybe it does, I don't know. I I don't actually know what the current average age range is for my audience. I, I uh, the last I checked, I'm pretty sure the bulk of my audience is in their, their teens and early 20s, which... Makes sense, since a lot of the stuff that I write and create is probably targeted at around that demographic, so that honestly sounds about right. For the longest time, it was also predominantly women, too. I don't think that's the case so much now. I think over the years I've gotten more male uh, fans, so I'm more, I guess, 50-50 now in terms of 
gender appeal. I've never specifically targeted my stories or my artwork towards a particular demographic beyond, I guess, the vague broad strokes of, you know, this piece of media is made for kids and this piece of media is made for adults, but that's generally the most distinction my stuff has in terms of, of target audience. I usually, I usually just, you know, write a story and then just have that be that, and I don't really worry too much about who the story is for, it's just, you know, um, the story will have its own tone and style, and I'll just stay faithful to that, and then sort of after the fact figure out what I think the appropriate age range is for that series, considering. Um, I, I'm not necessarily saying that's the best idea for everybody, I mean, that kind of depends. You should always... <laughs> I mean, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't necessarily copy me on that one. Generally speaking, you should always know what your target demographic is whenever you're writing a story. Like, always know who you're writing it for. Now, I personally think that gender targeting is completely bullshit and asinine. Like, I don't think that there is ever a good or justified reason to create something that is explicitly marketed to either men or women. I think that's retarded, and I think that you're going to get a better audience if you just create something that people of both genders can enjoy. So, that being said, however, you should always consider age as a demographic, because that one's actually kind of important. Um, the age demographic of a series is definitely going to affect what you can and can't put in your story, or how it can be framed. Now, I'm of a very liberal mindset, and I'm okay with certain adult themes being put in stuff that is ostensibly written for younger audiences, but it really depends on how it's handled. Like, um, if you were gonna put, uh, sexual themes in something that's written more for, like, preteens and stuff, I think that there's definitely a right and a wrong way to handle that material. Personally, I think you should always just be very mindful of uh, the implications of whatever you're writing. Like, stop and think about what kind of message uh, your writing sends. And if you're writing for a younger audience, that stuff is really important because younger viewers are going to be more impressionable. So, so, so just be very mindful. I might, I'll probably make a whole video in the future. I've actually got a lot of videos that I have wanted to make for a while that were just me discussing different topics. And one of them that I really want to make is a video talking about uh, sexuality in uh, fiction, particularly with how it pertains to children's media in specific. Um, because I think it's a really interesting topic to discuss. And I think generally the gut instinct of a lot of people is to think, well, kids' media doesn't Sexuality isn't a topic in kids' media, because sex isn't a topic in kids' media, but that's not really true. Um, sex is a topic in kids' media, but the way that we handle it in kids' media I think is really interesting, and I think it'd be a really interesting video to just kind of dive into that uh, uh, topic and really explore that, as well as to talk about, in terms of writing, how to consider things like character sexuality in your writing, because, um, I think that that's an important part of creating characters that people don't think about. I mean, it's not always important. Like, sexuality is not something you need to worry about if your story doesn't really have any romantic themes or there's no real reason for it to be brought up. But any story that's gonna have shipping and stuff like that, it's probably good to think about. And even if it's not going to, I still think it's good to consider character sexuality. And Bear in mind, when I use the term sexuality, I tend to use it in a very broad sense, so I'm not just talking about whether a character is straight or gay or bi. I'm also talking about things like, you know, what kind of features are they attracted to? Or do they like short people, tall people, blondes, redheads? Um, are they attracted to intelligence? Or, you know, is it more important for someone to be nice than to be smart? Or, you know, stuff like that. Because, like, sexuality and what we are attracted to in other people is way more complicated than just the gender that we're attracted to. Because if gender was the only deciding factor, then I, as a straight woman, would be equally attracted to every single straight man that I come across. Which is obviously not the case. So, I would probably go into that more in more detail. When I make the video talking about, uh, sexuality in media, 
and in writing. I'll, I'll go into more depth as to what I mean when I'm talking about how to define a character's sexuality, and particularly how that might be explored or factor into characterization, uh, especially in kids' media where the way you're allowed to tackle sex is far more restricted. Um, well, restricted to American audiences. It does depend quite a bit on how this is being published and whatnot. I know, for example, in Japan, uh, ta discussing sex in kids' media is not as taboo, but I personally have some gripes myself with how Japan handles sexuality in kids' media. Um, there are some things that kind of bother me about how they handle it when the show is obviously aimed at like 12 or 13 year old kids. And again, I'll probably talk about that in the video too. I don't think there's anything wrong with talking about sexuality in kids' media, but I think it is very important how we talk about it. So, I think it'll be a really interesting video to discuss. Um, let's see, how much time do I have left on my timer? What, another three minutes? Another three minutes of me rambling before I wrap up this diary entry for tonight. Uh, since we're on sexuality, I guess I'll end this with a short little statement about uh, a headcanon I have developed regarding Shadow the Hedgehog, and that is the headcanon that Shadow is both asexual and sterile. Okay, so the asexual thing is a little bit harder to prove, although the sterility thing is actually backed up by some science. And this might sound really weird and asinine, uh, that I have gone out of my way to do a bunch of research into genetics to try and create some kind of theory as to how the genetics of Mobians and Sonic works. I know that sounds really weird. I really love getting into all this, like, nitpicky biology shit. It, I, I don't know why, this kind of stuff just really fascinates me. But one thing that I did find, um, was, uh... I want to point out that Shadow is a calico. This is something that you might not have thought of, but he is. He's black, red, and white. He has a white patch on his chest, which makes him a calico. And so the reason I bring this up, and the reason this is interesting, is because uh, if Shadow is a calico, then that means that he is also probably infertile. Because male calicos are really, really, really rare. Now, I get that he's a hedgehog, and I got this, I'm, I'm stating this from the genetics of cats, but I'm not going to be able to apply hedgehog here because Mobians come in a bunch of different animal varieties, and I could explain in depth why I came up to the rationale that I did in some other video some other time. But my point is, male calicos only get that pattern because of a genetic defect that causes them to have essentially two X chromosomes. So, so in case you don't know, um, women have an X and have two X chromosomes, and men have an X and a Y. Male calico cats have XXY, and this uh, chromosomal sort of defect is also what causes them to be mostly infertile. Male calicos are exceedingly rare, and male calicos that can reproduce are even more excessively rare. So there's actually a really good chance that Shadow can't produce offspring. Also, as far as him being asexual, this comes from two things. One, a lot of people that I know have posed the theory that, you know, wouldn't it make sense for Gerald to have created Shadow to lack a sex drive, as a sex drive would potentially distract him from the objective he was designed to fulfill, which might actually make sense. If Shadow has no sex drive, there's less possibility for him to get distracted from whatever it is he has to do. And he is a very, you know, goal-oriented individual when he does have goals. Um, but this is potentially also supported by the fact that we have never seen Shadow had display any sexual attraction seemingly to any character, not even Rouge, who... Like, Shadow undeniably has a close connection with Rouge, and she's obviously probably the closest friend he has, and yet he still doesn't ever seem to express any sexual attraction, um, although she seems attracted to him. Now, it could just be that she's not his type, but it does kind of further support this idea that he just might not have a sex drive at all, which is fine if that's the case, but, you know, I just thought I'd share that thought. So, yeah. Okay, well, there's the timer, which means I gotta wrap up this diary entry for tonight. 
and slap it on YouTube and you guys can listen to my ramblings and I'll probably start trying to do these every night. Feel free to leave something in the comments, like if you want me to expand on a thought that I might have brought up in my rambling session, then you can comment whatever you like. Um, so, good night, you guys. I'm gonna be off to bed, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow night then, I guess.